Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. My name's Kyle and we're still on this hunting cabin build even though it may seem like we uh, jumped right into this video from the last one which didn't seem like a long ways away on the YouTube. In real life, we've been gone now for two jobs. So we went ahead and went and built a couple different buildings while the client was getting a lot of interior details going on the hunting cabin which obviously at this point we know is not a cabin this thing is awesome it's huge and what a great opportunity for us to build it i'm really excited i first time back down here in quite a while and i'm gonna stop talking flip the camera around show you guys what the update is and then we're gonna roll this video into tomorrow when i'm gonna be back here installing doors uh versetta stone and hopefully wrapping up a lot of these details so stick around so you don't miss how this thing turns out okay so first thing you're going to notice is the landscape has changed so they've come in they stripped all that sand away that they had you know built up for us to work on they pulled all the black dirt back you can see over here all this black dirt piled up i'll walk over here um, that way they could build the site up appropriately and then come back in and lay all of the black dirt down for some good sod but take a look at this building it is looking great and I will walk inside here very shortly to show you what's going on. I just wanted to kind of wrap around the outside. And this is where all the Versetta stone is gonna go. That's what we're gonna install as a wainscoat. We got a double door here, um, a double French door Plyco 92 series. So these are awesome doors. That's gonna go there and then we'll be able to finish all the steel detail around that area underneath the front porch. We got tons of black dirt. That's gonna all get pushed back for some nice uh, sod in the future, which hopefully I'll get to come back here and show you once there's grass planted. But let's go inside, I'll show you what's happening. Now the first thing you're gonna notice is there's a uh, insulation board down because there's gonna be some awesome heated radiant flooring going in. That is always an awesome way to efficiently heat and more importantly, be aesthetically pleasing to your body when you get heat coming from the ground, a nice warm concrete slab. Uh, you can see over here, a lot of the plumbing is, well, all the plumbing is roughed in for bathrooms, kitchens, stuff like that. We've got electrical service roughed in. Now this over here, I don't know if I even shared these details, but over here between these sets of windows, that's gonna be a fireplace going all the way up. So this is gonna be like the great room. And then when you come over to this side, there's gonna be the start of a mezzanine that's gonna wrap all the way around. Hey, what up, Greg? And that's where the bedrooms are gonna be upstairs. Um, so there's gonna be a lot of room here for the whole family to just really get together, hang out, and enjoy each other. When you walk into the garage, same thing. We've got the radiant floor system prepped. I don't know if you remember, and actually I'll show you over here. In the foundation wall, there were a bunch of knockouts and now it makes sense. What they did was they knocked out the foundation wall so that all of their plumbing, electrical and stuff could get up into the cavity of the wall since we don't have a basement with a rim joist um, and you know floor joist to go up into the outside walls. The concrete is there. They gotta have these knockouts, which was a great idea. Now I don't know about you guys, but I think it's pretty cool to see this thing progress. I would hope that i get the opportunity to come back and share with you guys uh, what they do on the inside but obviously understand i'm not doing any of this interior work once i get done with these exterior doors and the exterior details like my contract is done um, they have some some people in the family that are capable of doing this interior and if i can help them or give them advice on how i would do it i definitely will and if i get the opportunity to come back here show you guys how it turned out do a walkthrough you bet I'm gonna because I will be just as curious. So I just wanna do a quick walkthrough, give you an update, and we're gonna go right into tomorrow where we are gonna be doing all these doors and the wrap up of the exterior details. So let's get into it. So when we come through and have to put a door in before the concrete's poured uh, on a foundation wall, specifically with this one we got done, is Greg went ahead and cut these little blocks and that's gonna allow us to put a basically like a threshold, which is what he's putting right now. Hey, right, Greg? And that's gonna set on these blocks, but we cut it short so that once we install the door and they come to put concrete in, they can just knock it out, pour the concrete through. But we can't really just hang the door there for 
who knows, maybe it's a month before they pour concrete. So this will allow us to install the door, trim it out, finish it, and then when they come pour the concrete, knock that bottom board out, which Greg just graciously placed here for me. It's, uh, this might be a hair tight here, no? There we go. So now we can put this down here, and after the door's installed, it can just be slid out. So really all we're looking for is a nice level level threshold to set the door on, which is what we're going to do right now. Okay. You want to stand it in? Wait. 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 One thing that's important to note about our doors, and we try to use this, or we do use these doors on every insulated building specifically, is these are a 92 series Plyco. And one thing you'll notice is that this black line, this black line right here is a thermally broken door slab. So this basically creates a separation from the interior and exterior metal, so you don't have that frost or cold coming through. And we got the same thing around the full perimeter of the door jam. So these are really nice doors. They don't come cheap. Uh, these doors are about a thousand bucks a piece. But I think that it's a very important part of the entire building package. Because without a good door, you're going to have great heat loss. Or you're going to have, um, if you're air conditioning, you're going to be losing that heat or bringing heat into the building. All right, so our battery's about dead. But I just wanted to kind of say with these double doors, as you install them, it's not only important that the jams are plumbed perfectly uh, to get this nice reveal throughout the metal, but you also have to make sure that the bottom and the jams are perfectly level, so they're on the same plane. They can't be, one can't be higher than the other. It's got to be perfect here and perfect up the side in order to get a good reveal on a double door. I'm not a fan of double doors. I think they're a pain over time. They always seem to need some adjustments, uh, but that is another reason we use a very expensive steel frame door for the post frame industry because buildings do have movement. These doors are just over a couple thousand bucks a piece uh, for this set of doors, but they're well worth it. If you're gonna spend the money, you gotta make sure you get good doors, good windows, otherwise you have problems. Go ahead, go and roll past that joint there, and then we'll kind of get it where we like it. Now what we're doing is we're rolling out some felt paper. This is a 30 pound felt, and uh, well, our main purpose for this is you know helping with rain screen behind the stone, but also because there's no mortar in this stone, it's going to help hide any of the gaps, cracks, and looking into the stone once it's installed. A uh, down, Zach? No, wait, I can't see moving here for a second. Yeah, that's probably okay. All right, there we go. Now this is ready for Versetta stone, all we got to do is find our elevation, snap reference lines, and we can start installing. The first piece, when we're going up tight against this J channel, it's got these tongue and grooves, you got to deal with that. I just take my hammer cloth, kind of just get that out of there. Push it to the bottom. Right nah, here. we're going to go for 15 and a quarter here, which is right there. Okay. On there. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to screw up. We're going to go... 15 and a quarter over on this side. So there is a piece of base trim that you can use. Um, in our application here, I'm just not a fan of it. So what we do is the first row is just gonna get more cumbersome because two guys gotta really do it to be efficient, but it does work. Once I get the first piece, I'm just gonna basically line up the edges, get a screw. I'm gonna turn that up to second speed. And then we're always just gonna measure the leading edge here to be right on our mark that we want. Keep going down right there. And I'll come back and I'll screw the the other the other guys here, but 
We're just going to get this first course done. Now, you probably just saw that. See how this is kind of floppy? And you might be thinking, oh, that's not cool, Kyle. Just wait till the end. I'll show you. It'll be nice and stiff as soon as we set these other pieces in there. Now, we're ready to make our first cut. 21 and 5 eighths. The first cut, hopefully, when we cut off for that end, we can use what's left on this end to start our next run. And the nice thing about this saw, there's no water. But will it be good on dust control, Greg? I really haven't used this yet other than a couple times in my shop. You got hearing protection? That's good, it's always smart to have hearing protection. Where is my hearing protection? I mean, there's a little bit of dust when it's starting, but then it kind of goes away. The problem is we're not cre we're not cutting a consistent block, right. so every so time we get past, yeah, there it gives a place for the dust to go. So this is gonna go. It's gonna be a starter over here. This will be a starter, and hopefully this guy. One good thing to do is as you're installing them, just make sure that these top grooves are free of any debris, and that will save you some headache in the future. I can promise that. Okay, looks like we got a pretty good, nice tight cut. 15 and a quarter, right where I want to be. Now, before we go ahead and install our second course, we got to make sure we got enough fasteners here in the stone. And since this is the first course, I'm going to hit all of them. So just to give you guys kind of uh, a feel for this, this is the cut side and it's got a little bit of dust on it right now, but uh, it'll kind of weather and look the same as the face because they use basically a nice colored aggregate inside that's matched to the type of uh, stone finish that it's going to be. But when we put this next piece on, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and use just a finished edge. So it's going to tuck right in there. We're going to try to line it up. So it looks nice and straight, even though it's okay if it's a little bit off because the inconsistency of stone kind of makes it look more natural. What I like to do is run out the entire row on this second course to make sure, and then check with a tape measure to make sure that I'm in the same plane and level to this reference line. If you just stack them, you can get off. My worry and concern and over analyzing, making sure it's level goes back to the first time I ever used Versetta. And it's come, you know, it's come a far way since that date, but I still just think it's a good idea to check it so that it doesn't get off and you don't get a wave in your stone. Perfect example. Thank you, Greg, for putting this here. Yep, I knew exactly. Yeah, you knew exactly. So this piece right here, you can see is not in plane with this piece. So what that means is you have to play with them a little bit. Um, and I don't ever just install the piece in the order that I put it up there. Sometimes you got to pull pieces out and move them around because I don't like I don't like this piece right here. Let's see if that last one was 15 and a quarter minus eight is seven and a quarter. So what we should be is seven and a quarter and this guy's seven. So it's actually this guy, oh got a little bit of a rock there oh yeah it's right here this guy's a little high yes, it is.
Now that might work. I'm at seven and a quarter. This product is not always a two-man job. Usually it just you gotta get going, get into a rhythm, and then it's pretty good. Alright, let's go ahead and we'll start. Make sure those tracks are clean and yeah, yeah that'll good. work. Yeah, that'll work. Love it. Once again, the uh, the non-perfection helps with the random look of it. Of course, I just said I like, oh yeah, I love to like lay them all out, make sure that we're good. But this is kind of a short run, we're just kind of running with it. Yeah, I'm gonna that work. So now we should be needing another reference line. So why don't we just go off of this line, measure up, we'll snap a line. Yeah, let's do that. Well, all we need is two more courses. So as long as we're, let's just go like 10 inches up, right? 10 inches up from the... Yeah, from that snap line. I didn't think I was going to like the yellow color in there, but with the cedar, mm -hmm. it's fine. Yeah, like most stone, I think that it just, I think this stone accentuates whatever other colors you have mm -hmm. because it seems to go with I mean we've done it with so many different colors now mm -hmm. and it's always like people say the exact same thing you did you know I didn't know if I'd like that but it kind of brings out the color in this and it's like yeah, yeah it's, it's cool. just a it's just a yeah what, once it gets all done you'll you'll really yeah. you'll really like it you hardly even can tell that it's panelized once it's up you know if you're standing back there it, oh, yeah it's, it's really cool so it looks like Greg we're in the like eight and seven eighths range. Okay. Um, so we gotta get a piece here. Are you opening these all up, Zach, for us or what? We got we got two pieces over here. You're you're the you're the man today. Will this classify me as a German American bricklayer? Um, if you were a German American and laying brick, but this is like I a canalized stone. I'm German. I am American. I know, but you're not laying brick. So, it, but no one can lay. Oh. Well, everybody knows because they can see it. No, this, this, this we can't. So you're already at eight and seven eight. Mm -hmm. Can I check it? With yeah. My yeah. You can. Not because I don't believe you, because I want to make sure I didn't move it. Good trust issues. I, I get it. It all stems back to that tailgate. That's yeah, nice. baby. All I gotta do is raise this up just a hair. Raise them up. Thanks, Zach. Coming in, man. I told you you were important today. You're always important. So as you can see, it's not as easy as just putting it together, but what good is easy? Most things that are worthwhile, they take a little bit of effort. That's why Greg is single. He doesn't take any effort into finding his future wife. Agree or disagree, Greg? Put me on block like that. Agree or disagree? 2020 is going to be your year. I can't, I can't, I thought we're friends. Yeah, that's why I'm here for you. Why? Put me on block like that. Okay. That's gonna work. Do you like this? I think it's gonna work. Man. Okay, I like this next. Oh yeah, this will be. This might be the ticket. The other problem is this guy right here does not look good because we are we're kind of was formed at an angle backwards, so it's got a gap in it. I don't know what you're saying. We've done Versetta Stone, like I said, for probably the last five years, and it's always really had the same nuances since day one. Sometimes these panels aren't perfect, and I don't know, maybe if you're dealing with stone a lot, you already know that product isn't perfect, and you have to kind of piece and move things around, but it's just one of those things that you get used to. Greg doesn't like it because he doesn't have patience. Mm -mm. No. He wants it to be perfect, as do I. That ain't gonna work, that's not a good one. You gotta kind of pick them up, try them, 
and then if they don't they don't work you grab another one and usually that one you didn't like will work somewhere else All right, it's 11 o'clock. So really we've only been at this wall for a couple hours. But we got some pieces that we just didn't like. We just set them aside. We'll probably be able to use them for our top piece because now what we're gonna have to do is set something up and we'll rip them long ways uh, with, a, with a nice concrete blade on probably just a circular hand saw. The IQ power tool saw is great for just making a quick cross cut, but this saw doesn't have the capacity uh, to rip long ways that three foot long panel that the Versetta stone is. So now that we've got everything up to the last row, we'll go ahead and get our rips done and I'll show you how we finish off this last row. What we did was we went ahead and put a concrete cutting blade on our table saw. I protected it with a little bit of metal and hopefully this works. I've actually never done this. You ready? I'm right here. Just blow it, blow it on. I'd say that worked pretty good. Now, I wouldn't do that if you were around a bunch of people blowing it into their house or something, but we're out here in like middle of the country. Now we got our nice rip, and if this works, we'll have our template to go ahead and rip the rest of them. flashing behind it we nailed it to the building that way it was not going anywhere and what we'll do is we'll put some adhesive on the back of these pieces and it'll just cure and be fine I mean uh, this isn't going anywhere it's not structural it's literally facade uh, and these pieces are solid these are locked in they won't be able to go anywhere once everything is done and it just finishes it off real nice I'm pretty happy it actually is turning out just like I hope perfect so now that we have these all um, adhered in with our quad max which is good for masonry concrete and stone uh, this ain't going nowhere we can now cap our trim finish this and get our steel
Ladies and gentlemen, we are finally done with the hunting cabin as far as it goes for our contract. We're not going to be doing the interior as of right now. There's no plan on that. They're going to do it themselves. Uh, but I'm going to end you guys with some awesome footage. I'm going to walk around this thing and we'll get some beauty shots as it stands now. And if possible, I will come back, show you guys how it turned out if they allow me to. Obviously, this is their, you know, private residence so um, we got to respect that but i will do what i can and thank you guys for following along um, we got another one that we'll be starting soon so make sure you hit that subscribe button so you follow along with what we're doing and uh, i'm always putting up content whether it's tips and tricks some tool videos or some of these awesome build series so thanks a lot and we'll catch you guys on the next one Pretty cool the way they just hook this pump truck up, get it right in here. I was actually curious how they were gonna do this, and now I know. They just pump it in, I got a hose. These are pretty cool right here. Kind of protects all of the PEX tubing and helps slide around to this thing without getting caught on these knuckles here on all the mesh. Take a look at how much fill has been in here, has been added to this project. If you guys remember when we were building it, the excavator was sitting out here and it was just a huge drop off. I threw that tape measure. Look at this. Really is looking pretty good. Well, that was pretty cool. Um, I didn't want to stick around and bother guys too much. I mean, they're trying to lay concrete, and if you've ever, if you've ever laid concrete, you know that it's important to get it done and not be talking and chatting or be bothered by a guy with a camera trying to show the world uh, how concrete's poured. Because I don't really know how concrete's poured. I mean, I know, but I'm not really a concrete guy, so I'm not the most expert to talk about it. However, I wanted to show you guys the process. I wanted to show you guys, um, I don't think I really did show it because I think just being private, you know, I don't wanna um, put people on a video that maybe doesn't wanna be on a video. However, what was really cool, I think the best part about coming out to this site, and by the way, I am uh, driving down the driveway, so I'm not actually out on the road. Still need to be safe with my seatbelt, but, um, before I get on the road, I just kind of wanted to do this video and kind of talk about my thoughts of the morning. I went out to follow along with the pour on the hunting cabin. And I think the coolest part about this morning was seeing all of the family members show up because this is, it's not just for one person. This is, uh, this project is for an entire family and not just one immediate family, but a bunch of brothers, a bunch of um you know family members that's going to be around for a long time and the whole purpose with this exact build was to provide a place for the family to get together 
and to hang out more than just a place for the guys to go and hunt. So I saw that today for the first time, a bunch of kids, wives, and the brothers were all out there. And that was really cool to me. It, it, it's so much more than just collecting a paycheck. Uh, I think seeing the fruits of our labor, the fact that they're out there and they're going to enjoy that as a family. I mean, what is better than that? I mean, as a contractor, we get to see what our hands can do. We get to build, we get to create, but then to see the people you're creating for really enjoy it. That just brings it home and really happy. So it was really cool to see that. And maybe in the future, I'll get back. I'll show you guys how it wraps up, how it turns out, but I'm not, I'm not contracted for any of that work. And I definitely want to make sure that I, uh, you know, I respect privacy. So I'm going to get out of here. I'm on the road and thanks for following along guys. We'll catch you guys on the next next build series, man.